Welcome back. In case you just joined us, this is Plus Politics, where we are looking at uh, some top political stories in the uh, in the polity, and we're looking at uh, uh, the second issue now. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party (PDP), Uche Sekandos, has evaluated PDP governors as high for executing various projects that have a direct impact on the lives of citizens. Secondo said the pass mark given to the governors was due to their high level of their prudence despite the little resources accrued to their respective states. How true is this position? Still joining us to talk more on this, we have Nelson Okujimi, who is a public affairs analyst, and uh, Reverend Dakpo Daramola, a uh, political analyst. Uh, let, me let me start with uh, Dakpo Daramola this time around. And uh, looking at this statement from uh, uh, Uche Secundos, people will say that <laughs> this might be a subtle way of a healthy competition that Nigerians will benefit at the end of the day, or you just see it as a pure political statement. No, yeah, I mean, what do you expect from a PDP chairman? I mean, uh, it's a political statement. It's understandable. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, most, I mean, we are told that most parents. It doesn't matter how we are or, I mean, how low your children are behaving. You will still find a way to, you know, hype and praise them. You know, in the presence of others. I mean, who doesn't want to celebrate their children? I mean, how many people have disowned their children for, you know, acting irresponsibly? So, ordinarily, what he said for me is a political statement. But let me even take it a, 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 a step further. I can tell you that there is no single state in this federation that the governor can be praised. There is no single, there is no single state. They are all wasting our resources. They are not, you know, concerned about the people. What is the state of education? Let's, you know, when we were discussing in the first, um, in the first segment, I said there are certain parameters that you have to use. The, I mean, to know whether, you know, to conclude, you know, whether, you know, objectively. So let me start with education. How many of them can you can boast of ultra-modern classrooms for their students? I'm not talking about tertiary here now. Even at the primary and secondary school level. Is the question directed at me? You go around all these, all these states and you will still find students who are sitting on the floor, students who are using, you know, blocks you know, to, uh, as their seat. Students who are, you know, not being taught properly, you know, what is the standard that he is using? I mean, let's go into even the road networks. We all come from this state. We all come from this state to travel home. I remember when they were celebrating my governor, and now you go to a lecture and see what is on the ground. Go to a shoe state and tell me what you can call anything of your mother. Let's call a spade a spade. Okay. So there is no single governor. Okay, Dr. Dr. Mola, Dr. 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 Mola I, I was going to tease you. To I was going to tease you that whether the question was directed at me, but trust me, I'm coming back to that. When you say there's no single governor, I think I know a state that I might want you to check. And uh, maybe I should whisper it to you. I'm coming back to that. And that is uh, Boronu State. I've heard so much about that governor. Look at what he has done on education. We'll come back to that. But Nelson... Do you share that uh, opinion expressed by uh, Dara Mola just now? No, absolutely not. I, I don't because uh, I won't make a, I, I will say, I won't make a general statement like, uh, I'm sorry to use that one, like my brother and my friend that Dara Mola said. Uh, the statement credited to uh, Mr. Uche Secondos, like he rightly said, I align totally with him. It's a political statement. And again, you want to ask, how could the governors have even performed when for the larger part of even 2020, we have been on lockdown? Is the, Mr. Oche Secondus telling us that within uh, May 29, when they were sworn in to uh, December uh, 2019, is when they had performed this miracle that is giving them a scorecard? And like my brother rightly said, what are the parameters? What is the level of education in these states that he has mentioned? What is the accessibility to health facilities? What is the accessibility to, you know, 
basic infrastructures that will make life meaningful for the average Nigerian. So for me, Mr. Oche is a conducer. I'm sure uh, I don't want to go political. I'm sure he's only trying, you know, uh, to uh, be in the good books of these governors for reasons, you know, uh, that is best known to all of us because he's the chairman of the political party. But for him to score them, I, within uh, a four-year tenure in which no governor in the last uh, one and a half years or two years has been able to, you know, really, you know, deliver on the dividends of democracy because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has shut down governance in most states, you know, uh, okay. for a larger part of this year. So uh, is the parameter with which he arrived at that conclusion, you know, uh, is very, very questionable. Okay. And right. that is why I said uh, it's a political statement from, you know, a political uh, leader of the party. Okay, I, I, I am putting it in context from what you said now. And Dr. Daramola, if we can continue from where Nelson uh, finished, he, he actually, the second was actually explained that despite the, you know, little resources, the meager resources available to them. In other words, he put the idea of the lockdown into perspective. So, um, can we consider that? And if you have to also make reference to the, uh, uh, that kind of comment I made about the governor of Boronu State, I understand that despite the insurgency, he's been doing fantastically well in terms of education. So just two in one. Again, when you say he's doing fantastically well, I don't know. What, like I said, are, they, are the students operating in very modern, or, 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 you know, are they, are they studying under very modern conditions. Is there primary health care sufficiently in the state? Has the man built a hospital mother and child that takes care of quite a sufficient you know, percentage of people in need? You see, don't say mega resources. These are the, you see, it is the duty of these governors not to keep waiting for what is coming from Abuja, but to generate uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, revenue. In Idea. Canada. I'll give an example. With all the money being generated in Lagos today, I'll come back to Bono. With all the money being generated in Lagos today, are you telling me that what we are getting in Lagos is the best that we can get? I mean, tell me how many new roads, new, I thought, go for, look at the world, not rehabilitated roads, not refurbished ones. Tell me how many new, newly constructed roads that we have built in Lagos. Since 1999, are you telling me that Ikorodu, as an example, is only one road that can enter Ikorodu since 1999? So that's what, I, well, that's what I'm concerned about. Look at the mega traffic in Lagos today. Are you telling me it's not avoidable? Are you telling me that all those roads that, that, they, that, that they, they claim they want to construct and they start and it never ends in four years, in five years, in six years? So let's be frank with ourselves. But no can do better. I know that the governor inherited a very, uh, a very challenged, a very challenged state, where insurgency has really attacked the state. I can understand that. Okay. But I, what I'm saying is that, and I know that there's a lot of devastation in that state. But what I want to see, let me tell you the parameters I'm using. I'm using the parameters of education number one. I'm using healthcare delivery, number two. Okay, so I'm using agriculture, number three. Are you telling me that our state, including Oshu, they cannot, including Akiti, they cannot use agriculture to liberate in a country that has over 200 mouths to feed? You are telling me we cannot use agriculture to liberate our people and to employ our people? So let, let's break it down. That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. So let's, until we'll, I see we'll break it down government now. at a let's, level whereby I can see those clear indices that I can use to say this government is performing well. But without, I'm repeating unequivocally that no governor deserves our place. <laughs> let me wow. also tell you, how wow. many of them? I, I'm coming back to that. President Muhammad Ibuari, when he suggested that there should be local, local government financial autonomy, Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Mola, Dr. Mola, please, let me stay with you so that I'll, I'll make it 2-2 two, two now. Let me stay with you. Can we put it in context? Can we be very, very factual? 
I, I'll give you some funny scenario. I listened to an interview some years ago when we were having the issue of bailout, where governors had to beg the federal government and they helped them out. And the governor of Ohio State was giving explanation that maybe I used to collect five billion naira monthly. I, I'm trying to remember the figure. Now, because of the fall in crude price, I started taking 2.5 billion. And I have a wage bill of about 4 billion naira. And they were telling the civil service that we have to cut your salary. You remember the episode? So can we look at the peculiarity of Nigeria? Because what you are talking about looks like the, the best practice, what you should use in defining a good governance. But when we have a problem of systemic issue where the resources are largely at the center, they have fewer resources to handle as a federating unit, have you put all this into context and probably put yourself in your position as a governor in a, in a state in this current arrangement? Is it like that to me? Yes, quickly. No, you see, like I told you, all of this, all of this issue of resources are nothing but excuses. I can tell you that for free. I just gave an example of Lagos State. With all the money coming in, in that internally generated revenue, or the one that uh, is coming from the, the, the uh, I mean, FA, FAC, you, I cannot see what is coming in is not, and what is on the ground doesn't complement each other. There is a lacuna. And, uh, and until, uh, that's what I'm saying, uh, until we see a commensurate development, something that stands side by side the amount that is, the staggering amount that they are getting. Let me also tell you that many of the project, the so-called projects, they are World Bank assisted, I mean, World Bank funded project. Okay. So what are they using the money that is coming to them to do? If a state like Ohio State, as big as Ohio State, can tell me that I remember in those days in the former show, Obama show on his own had about two or three factories functioning in the former show. As a small Obama show, how many factories are functioning in the former show? Are you telling me that we cannot have a mango, mango producing, you know, uh, uh, a juice, a juice, mango okay. juice producing company? Okay, that's I'll that be back. Can employ people and can pay salaries I'll be back to you to, to, to give your final comment. But let me stay with Nelson. Nelson, I'm sure you have some issues you don't agree with. Go ahead. No, uh, he has. He has set at this position. My own, uh, my own uh, assessment of it is that <coughs> what are these indices for measuring if a governor or a government has performed well? And these are the basic things that makes life meaningful for the people. How accessible do the citizens or residents in the state, how are they able to assess quality uh, you know, uh, medical facilities, the infant and maternal mortality? How has the government been able to reduce it? Before the government came in and as at now, can we have the scorecard to say, okay, before this government came in, the infant and maternal mortality was maybe 80%. And as of today, it's maybe 20%. Then we can give thumbs up. How has the government been able to develop infrastructure in the states? You talk about roads, you talk about schools, you talk about uh, even provision of a uh, social benefit for the citizenry. So for me, I think the question now should be, I won't make a general statement. My own is that what are the resources available to these states? Mm -hmm. And again, don't forget, like the former deputy senior president rightly said, we are operating a feeding bottle, you know, federalism, uh, fe fe federalism, in which the states have become parasites, in which the states have refused to understand that it is their responsibility to generate revenue and stop waiting for resources uh, from the center. And when Mr. Uche Secondus is commending these governors, I want to tell you frankly this evening that with regards to security, these governors have not lived up to the billing because when there's any security challenges in their state, every focus is on Abuja, as if Abuja, as if the federal government is the one collecting the security votes that is entrusted in the state governors as well as the local government administration. So for me, I will, the, the statement by Mr. Uche Secondus is a political statement, but be that as it may, 
we need to challenge these governors or local government administrators okay. or those that are the presidency that look, there are basic parameters to determine how a government has performed. Okay. And these basic parameters are things that makes life meaningful for the average citizen. How can the man, how is he able to assess quality education and, you know, uh, and uh, uh, quality and affordable education for his children? How am I able to have to have assess quality and affordable medical care? What are the measures? As the, what measures has the government put in place to ensure security of life and property in the society? Okay, these are major things that are what we should be demanding. Also, to... accessibility to education is very very key mm -hmm. because if people don't have education, it is very very difficult for them to break out of poverty. Because as a citizen, you must have an asset. If I'm a doctor now, I'll be selling my service. As a media practitioner, you're selling your service by providing information. But you look at the, uh, the voice of the Nigerian society, a lot of our youths today are jobless because, one, they have refused or the government has not made education accessible and affordable to most parents. And it has become very, very unattractive. That okay. is why a lot of our young men today who okay, are Nelson. out there on the streets, even Th th thank you so much, Nelson Kujumni. Uh, uh, quite, uh, I was going to ask you to give your final comment on the way forward. Uh, because I promise you, Dr. Daramala, if you can do that in 40 seconds, uh, on the way forward, as we go into 2021, what kind of governance do you expect from our governors? For example, I would want a case of, let's scrap the issue of security vote. What more will you ask for? I support, I support you on the first one. The second one is that the people themselves, we ourselves must demand good governance. That is what, we, you see, the docility of Nigerians, and I'm not talking about a misguided NSAS protest. Don't get me wrong. The concept of NSAS was good, but it was in lack direction. And that was why it went the way it went. That's why it was like that. That's a, 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 another matter for another day. But people must engage their, 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 I mean, their, their, leader, their political leader. We, are, we cannot continue to be subservient. If, unfortunately, anyway, they believe they were not elected. So our votes did not get them there. They were okay. selected and so they can do whatever they like. But I am saying that without people demanding good governance, we cannot get to our El Dorado. That is, that, that is the challenge. Thank you so much, Dr. Daramola, for your time. We quite appreciate it. And once again, Nelson Okujimi, thank you for staying with us from 7 p.m. to now. Uh, I'm afraid we have to end it here, but it was quite an insightful discussion, which I believe that one day the lamentation will reduce, will not be described as whalers, but people who actually want the best for our country. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's quickly have a short breather, and when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Just to put the record straight, it is not out of place to do a self-assessment. What can be a terrible case is if one is on a self-delusion. But for close watchers, the competition is a welcome idea if this will lead to more developmental strides that will have a direct impact on the people. With provable performances, a press release or a press conference will not be necessary. To the political class across board, let 2021 be a year of performance and not a year of smear campaign. And that's my take on tonight's discussion, plus politics returns tomorrow with a Christmas edition where we'll continue our analysis of topical issues. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now. <music>